So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. And now for the review of the day. I already got a five-star verified purchase review of Six Steps to Seven Figures by Mr. Brandon Hargreaves. He bought the paperback, it says, and he said, one of the best books I've read in years. I have been encouraging all the agents on my real estate team to read this book. It's helped me map out a solid five-year financial plan for myself and my family. I've got some big goals and I'm going to crush them. Brandon Hargreaves. Thank you, Brandon, for reading Six Steps to Seven Figures. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. Welcome, Rockstar Nation. Thanks for tuning into the State of the Market Podcast with your host, Pat Hyben and Kevin Kaufman. All right, Rockstar Nation, uh, welcome back to State of the Market. I have my co-host today, Mr. Kerry Grinkmeyer. Kerry, how's it going, buddy? It's going great, Pat. Having a lot of fun. That's awesome, dude. Well, we got some good news uh, to uh, discuss, so let's get right down to the nitty-gritty. First thing we want to talk about is an article came out in Market Watch, right? It's talking about basically, you know, the whole premise of it was uh, how home buying is going to be like buying a stock soon. Um, and uh, uh, let's discuss. What do you think? It talks a lot about knock. The company Knock and uh, how Knock works, and talks a little bit about Zillow i buyers, i buyers in general. Um, but let's let's stick to the headline here. Home buying will soon be like buying a stock. Do tell. Well, I I think um, I first was cued to this back when Spencer Roscoff was still. Uh, CEO of Amazon, and he made the statement about a year and a half ago that we're going to turn the um, buying of homes into a three-click process. Those were the exact words he said, and that's shortly thereafter they they introduced the iBuyer um, or instant offers that they are they are driving. And I, I I followed up on that on a video on my YouTube channel, Best of U.S. Homes, that. I was uh, I was a um, a stockbroker, and I used to get paid a 1.25 percent to do a stock trade. So if I did a hundred thousand dollars worth of stock trades, I I made a thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. That stock trade has now cost you four dollars and ninety nine cents on E Trade, um, and they have basically through um, technology made it easy to buy stocks. And Spencer said that's what we're going to do with uh, home buying. And I, I have no doubt that he is, he is right on and they are expanding it. And as the article says, this is, it was printed by, uh, by uh, Market Watch, but it was in the Wall Street Journal as an insert. And so that put, gives it a lot of credibility. Well, uh, you got to have some automation in there. So let, let's talk about this, right? So you know, I, you know, interesting, one of the things I've been studying lately, and I've been very reluctant to study this up until now, for whatever reason, I've heard some podcasts and, and, um, and I said, well, let me read some books on this, this is Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And, um, you know, one of the things that fascinates me about it, because I've been dollar cost averaging a little buys here and there, just to play with the system, see how it works, is you could do, I could do it on a Sunday night at, at, 3 a.m. or something, right? Like the, the market never closes, right? I can buy and sell, you know, anytime. 
And I think that that's kind of uh, something that's automated. You can't do it anytime. The stock market still has a market. But the point is, technologically, you have a bid and an ask, right? And yeah. if, if the bid meets the ask, the transaction just happens, right? You don't necessarily have a broker or a guy running around the floor going, you know, hey, this random dude is buying $30 worth of Shopify in Folly Beach, South Carolina, and a random dude in Portland, Oregon wants to sell this $30 worth of Shopify. It's all automatic. So I'm wondering if if, if what is going on is is, is, is what knock is going to, not, not knock because that's something completely different, but was what Spencer's thinking about right deep down is that will it be automatic will the seller be able to put their ask and the buyer be able to put their bid and at 3 a.m on sunday i might be able to close a deal based on you know what's already in the system talk to me about that well i i think you make a very good point and as you're describing that i'm thinking of ebay uh, I can buy anything on eBay, and it, it is a bid, uh, ask and bid process. So let's say if, if I have enough data on the home that I'm interested in, that I see on Zillow or whatever website, if I have enough data and I can match that with my likes and dislikes, and it has all the, the pictures, the videos, why couldn't I just say, Yes, I'll, I, I'll buy this house. Why couldn't I just say, yeah, I'll buy the house if you change the counter, countertops to granite and, um, do the, uh, and take this wall down? Why couldn't I do that and, and do it at 3 o'clock in the morning? And if the owner is somebody like Zillow and they have the technology to say, okay, if I change the house to, um, to what you want, if the price is going to go from 700,000 to 750, and they come back at three o'clock in the morning and say, yeah, we can do it at 750, and I like it, I click. Or, or what if the seller just put it in there, autom- like, like when, they, when they're doing their listing appointments, oh yeah, do, do, you know, they're filling out a form that says, do you have a, you know, a stainless steel refrigerator or not? Do you have this? Do you not have this? You, you know, they put in answers to questions like, um, uh, you know, minimum, maximum time for home inspection contingency is 10 days. So when, when the bid comes in, right, mm-hmm. if they put 12 days, it automatically rejects that and counters with 10 while the guy's asleep, yeah. While the seller's asleep, you know, all that stuff is implemented ahead of time, including price, right? And and and, and something that you you said you asked the question: Does it have a stainless steel refrigerator? If you got enough pictures, the, the artificial intelligence can tell you that it's a stainless steel. You don't have to answer questions. Visual recognition will do that. Think about if, if I walked through a house with a video camera and videoed every inch of that house, that data could be collected through artificial intelligence. I don't have to answer questions. It's all picked up through uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah, that's crazy. And that kind of um, leads, and we could come back to this a little bit if you want, but you know that kind of leads to our our. our next thing of what's going on with, you know, talking about how uh, there was an article, I think it was an Inman, it was talking about um, basically, you know, home builders, right? And real estate companies and flippers are starting to watch uh, what is going on in hotels to determine what to build in their houses in 2020 and 2021. Um, talk to me about this. They have, you know, all, all this, like, they're basically making them smart hotel rooms, uh, with predictive maintenance and, uh, predictive themes in them that they know that they're, you know, that, that help the Hilton help a holiday in and how they're going to help home, home sellers, home buyers. Talk to me. Well, that, that goes back to the internet of things. When you talk about hotel maintenance, that the uh, you're going to have sensors on on every part of the the maintenance of of your house or in hotel rooms and and therefore uh, when a pipe is about to burst the pipe will tell um, a, a 
reciprocal, not a reciprocal, but a hub, uh, a browser, and it will notify management you've got a, a pipe that's going to burst, and therefore you need to get it taken care of. That's going to happen in our homes. Uh, and this is all going to be a part, as I said, Internet of Things, which is made possible through 5G. We currently, are, our, our Internet is run by 4G, and that's high frequency um, uh, radio waves. 5G is low frequency. Uh, your last experience with 5G waves was when you drove down the, the highway and said, breaker, breaker, uh, and you talked to a truck <laughs> three miles down the road. There, that's kind of obsolete now. Sure. But the, the problem with 5G is you don't, it, the radio wave breaks down from the chemicals that are in our atmosphere, and so it's short distance. So now if I have in my home a, a 5G sensor on my furnace, on my hot water heater, on my oven, whatever, there'll be about a thousand of them. They can talk to each other through a router that collects all that information and then through my 4G network throws it into the cloud and it compares it to your house. And when something happens in your house, we learn from it. And now we translate that back to Carrie's house and tell him the same thing that happened in Pat's house is going to happen at your house. Get a maintenance man there today. And that's like, like what? Like, give me some examples. Well, uh, um, my water heater, uh, it's going to explode. And we know that because certain things happened in your house that created the explosion. We now have that data. X, Y, and Z um, uh, indicates that a water heater. Eight, eight out of 10 water heaters on Wild Orange Gate have, have um, been replaced. And you're, the two at, you're one of two out of 10 that haven't been replaced on your street. Well, you yeah. Oh, you might want to replace that sucker before you have an inch of water in your storage room and all your boxes are ruined. Exactly. And and it's it's uh, whether it be that or it be your dishwasher, uh, we know uh, dishwashers are good examples. They last about five years. Certain things happen in the dishwasher before it breaks down. Well, if we can if we can accumulate the data of what those certain things are, and I can monitor your dishwasher, I can tell you it's gonna happen before it does. It's already, this is already a part of the elevator industry. They have 9 million elevators with sensors on them. They go back to a hub that is run by the elevator company, and they can determine when that, based on past data, an elevator is gonna shut down. So. With that data, they can predict when an elevator is going to go down. Well, why is that important? Well, if you have a 50-story building and you have 10 elevators, you need them all working. So if, if I can predict this elevator needs maintenance, I get a guy in there at 2 o'clock in the morning, he, maintenance, he, he, he repairs it, and the elevator no, no longer goes down. That is in existence today. I wonder if this is going to happen, Carrie. I wonder if uh, this is the end of home inspectors. And I'm going to tell you why I say this, right? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Because if you could, if, if, if you're 5G and 4G, and that, a lot of that shit's above my pay grade. But if they're communicating and they're, and they're creating a report that basically says, you know, your hot water heater is shot and you're, you know, this is broken and you have too much cold air coming in from this window on this bedroom and they're telling you all this stuff do you really need to pay a human being to go by there and no. uh, turn everything Test probably everything. not probably not uh it, or so it, it, it now or what happens is the inspector's got to upgrade his license and he's got to be able to uh answer that that data analyze maybe that data yeah yeah maybe he's the guy who actually comes and uh and let you know, um, or where, where I think this is going is, is a real estate agent is going to be the intermediary, uh, and he's going to be an advisor. And maybe he's the guy who calls you up and says, hey, I've interpreted this data, and you need to take this action. Uh, again, if we bring it to health, it's the same thing. Are we no longer going to need doctors if, some, if my body is being 
Uh, yeah, we're going to need Not, them. Yeah, you're going to need them. Yeah, you're going to need somebody to talk and analyze yeah. them. But they're going to it's going to make the doctor so much better. It's kind of like what the cell phone did to the human being, right? You could be a dumbass and uh, have a, 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 an iPhone in your pocket and and be the smartest person in the back seat of the car because <laughs> yeah. you got all you, all you got to do is google information you know what i mean and um and, and the same is going to be for doctors same is already happening for doctors and for agents right. and obviously for home inspectors and all that stuff it's interesting yeah and and it's it's coming fast um 5g is going to bring it on extremely fast so, so this goes back to, you know, the original article that started off this conversation. You know, it, what do you think uh, Zillow is, is doing? Like, what do you think that they literally have up their sleeve? Because, you know, the article says, right, that $74 billion, $74 billion, first of all, were paid out in commissions in 2018. That is a ton of money right that, that that is a like that is a that they are hungry for for that like second thing is there's a hundred million users on zillow monthly this is a monthly number every month right yeah but only half a million which is 0.05 percent like one half of one percent not even five percent one half of one percent buy a house Total, right? Right. Uh, uh, you know, in, in, in the United States, six million houses a year, right? A hundred million a month. So there's all these people that are on Zillow, including myself. I get my wife's on it. You know, people I know are on it, you, you know, but none, 99.5% of them aren't buying houses today what is that today this month what does that mean what you like all they've got all that access to human beings like well what, i think it, how it, are they going to monetize that tribe of millionaires.com guys write that down rockstar nation got a free special offer for you now i've just written a book and it's just been published co-authored it with david osborne who's been on this show multiple times you don't know david he is one of the top execs at keller williams real estate was personally mentored for the last two decades by gary keller himself and he's in all kinds of businesses his bio and the explanation and everything is in this book but anyways david and i got together we decided to write a book we called it tribe of millionaires and i guarantee you it's going to change your life to find out more just go to tribe of millionaires.com we're going to give it to you absolutely free only thing we ask in return is of course number one you pay the shipping not a big deal but number two that you go on amazon and write us a review we're really looking to get an incredible amount of reviews. And because of that, we're giving this book away for free. Go to tribeofmillionaires.com today. It's Team Tober here at Rebus University, and we're running a special for Real Estate Rockstar Nation. This special is gonna save you 90% on your team's real estate training. And the cool thing is, as a team leader, you don't gotta do nothing. Just put your team to work on this incredible training. Here's how it works. This week, it's the Certified Listing Agent course. Buy one course, buy the Certified Listing Agent course. Yes, the Certified Listing Agent course where hundreds of teams have taken this course and many require it before any agent goes on a listing appointment. If you buy one of those, you get nine more for free. That's right, one agent takes that sucker and you get nine other agents to take it, get certified completely on their time, absolutely free. Buy one, get nine free. The cool part about it is you can then discuss it at your team meetings talk about everybody's progress and talk about what everyone learned if you want to get the certified listing agent course for you and the rest of your team nine for free just go to hybendigital.com backslash teams 
This offer is only valid for this week only. Next week will be another course. That's hybendigital.com slash teams. Uh, my own personal opinion, and, and uh, I've been pretty much ridiculed in cases of it, is they're, going, they're, they're, building a, they're building something to be bought. That is the that is the world we live in today. Who's gonna you, build it? Who's gonna buy it? Like, Amazon. Okay, Amazon. There you go, Amazon. Amazon. There's is, only a few people that. There's only a few companies that can, right? There, there are there are probably uh, seven of them. We are six of them. We talked about it, but Amazon has already on on July the twenty third um, of this year they came into the real estate business. Well, why the hell does Amazon want to be in the real estate business? It is certainly not for those commissions. They don't want the head. They want the data. They want to be the, the, in the closing room uh, and say, we'll turn your house into a smart home. If you look at what Amazon offered, they said they will put, give you uh, a credit of 500, I think it's $500 up to $5,000, depending on the price of your home, to help you get moved in and help to convert your house to a smart home. And that is to put Alexa in uh, seven of the 12 rooms in your house so you can turn your lights on, you can turn everything off. And, but that's, not, that's just the start of it. You and I were talking a, a little bit earlier. They wanna sell you a smart microwave. They wanna sell you a smart refrigerator. They wanna sell you a smart toilet. And uh, with, talk, talk to me about that, by the way. Let's slow this down. Smart toilet? Yeah, because this is good stuff. <laughs> so, okay. What a smart toilet will do is it will have a reciprocal in it so that when you poop in it, Whoa. the reciprocal will probe your poop and it will tell you if you have too much blood cells in your poop, if you have too much protein, if you have antibodies, and it will then send that out and compare my poop to 3 million other 75-year-old males poop and then look at predictive analytics and tell me whether or not I need to get to a doctor. Okay, let, I'm going to stop you right there. It, 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 so here's the thing. It's really not about the doctor. No. It's, here's what it's about, right? Because this is, and let's just say Amazon or Alibaba, and we're going to get to Alibaba and you know this because it's oh, all. God, about, I hope it's not Alibaba. Yeah, but let's say somebody, right? I'm just saying a big company, um, you, you know, does that. What they're really doing is saying, "Hey, you got too much protein in your poop. You need more vegetables. We recommend well, there's a sale on kale. There you, you have go. too much. You have you 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 have too much. Your white blood cells are low. You need." you know, to take this supplement, here's how much it costs, click here to buy now, right? I mean, and this is really where it's going, right? This is yeah. really where how they make money off this. Now, I think that what, what I see with this in keeping this real estate focus, because guys, this is real estate focus in that, you know, these smart toilets will be in houses, right? Because they're already in hotels. They're already telling Hilton um, that they that the water is flowing too much in the toilet, and that they need to, you know, change the little bobber thing in the toilet because a running toilet in one hotel room, it, you know, could could cost an extra two grand a year per room that has a running toilet. Um, and they're already doing this, right? So they're going to do all this for real estate. It's coming, right? So here's where here's where I think they're going to where the jackpot is right going back to this bid ask thing right you got amazon prime free delivery you got amazon super prime or whatever they decide to call it it allows you to go into this bid ask system right yeah just like you can sell your house on ebay can sell your house on amazon amazon homes you you enter all your info into the bid ask system you have cameras all over the house you have an electronic lock boxes. They already know the person's social security number, or have a copy of their credit card, all that stuff, have a copy of their driver's license, whatever. 
They may even uh, require, you know, everybody on the Amazon uh, homes division, you know, anybody in there to, to be pre-qualified by their lender, which can qualify them in five minutes so the consumer knows that these people are legit. And all they got to do is look at the house and enter a bid ask. But what are they missing? They're enter missing bid, all the yeah. pictures of all one, one, I think it's 110 million houses in the United States that Zillow has. It's Zillow has. So that's why and they so, would buy so, Zillow. So if I'm Amazon and I want to get control of the smart homes of the United States and what, how many million people do you say goes to Zillow a, a month? Was it nine? Million? 100 million per month. Okay. So I'm Amazon. What a, to put this puzzle together, what am I missing? I'm missing Zillow. And guess mm. where Zillow's headquarters is? Deep and guess, guess where Amazon's headquarters in? They're both in Seattle. They're two miles apart. Do you think these people are having coffee? <clears throat> Do you think right now, as we speak, Amazon and Zillow are trying to put together a deal. Zillow's price was $65 12 months ago. Do you know what the price on Zillow is today? So 29. 29 bucks, yeah. It's it's half of what it Zillow is currently a has a market cap of 6 6 billion dollars. Amazon is 1 trillion. That's their market cap. They can buy it with petty cash. They can buy Zillow with petty cash. And it's down where it is a bargain. Within six months. If I'm Jeff Bezos, I'm writing a check. Damn, that, that's a big prediction, Holmes. I mean, you're like, within six months. <laughs> because, hell, if they, if they turn this iBuyer thing into a profit, because they're they're reporting their earnings on November, I believe it's the the seventh. Then the price goes up. I gotta buy it at twenty nine. On the other hand, if they if they show a loss, it may go to twenty. But Amazon's going to buy Zillow. And remember where you heard it first. Kerry Grinkmeyer, best of U.S. homes, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then, and, you know, the same article goes on to talk about NOC. Um, and, and basically what NOC does is they just, you know, you, they basically allow you to just find a house first. It's only for move uppers, right? It's only for, hey, I got equity. I'm an introvert. I don't want to deal with an agent. I don't want to deal with an open house. I don't want to deal with a stager. I don't want to deal with any of that crap. I'm going to just go out there and find a house. And then they find a house and they buy it. And then knock is essentially an eye buyer. But in addition to that, in addition to them saying, okay, well, we're, we, we bought your home. So you don't have to put it up for sale. They do the whole loan. So they, they give you a loan to buy the next house. Right. So you could just buy swing the next mortgage. Yeah. Swing, swing. Yeah. Somehow. A bridge mortgage, I think they call it. Yeah, and they charge you three percent, three points on each side, three percent on the of what you, you know, sell them your house for, or the value they pay your house, and three percent on whatever you buy. And it basically, it's just a streamlined process. This is like I don't know, I don't want to deal with it. You know, just just let us find our dream home first. When we find our dream home, I don't want to have to worry about it. You know, and then you could go to that dream home and be like, look, we're cash buyers. What do you mean, yeah. cash buyers? You, you, all your money's in equity. Nope, we're cash buyers. We're with knock. Yeah, yeah, and they're giving you a swing, a bridge mortgage to do it. No, I, I, I think it's exciting how, how this is all changing, and I, and I think we got to come back to who we're all about. What about the real estate agent? What, where, where does he land in this whole thing? And I, and I think, and this is what I preach on my YouTube channel. You got to become the smartest guy on the block. You got to, you got to be reading books. You got to be reading articles like this in the wall street journal. You got to be listening to podcasts like this so that when, when the shit all falls, you're on the top and, and, um, the, the Amazons, the Zillows, the people who are going to control this business want you. 
Now, how do you do that? You, you get out in front of your people and you share this kind of information with them. I had a guy call me yesterday from, uh, from Chicago and he's, he's a mortgage broker. And he says, I watch your videos and, uh, and you're really way ahead. What do I need to do in my business? And I said, just repeat what I said, but get on YouTube. Put video, videos out there, create a blog and become the expert in your community. Of course, of course, it's cliche. I mean, people have been saying that for years. There's just nobody, you know, only 1% of the agents that, that it takes uh, work. will listen to what you do. Yeah, of course, of course. Then you're 75 years old. You're out there, you know, kicking up dirt every day. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? So it gives me something to do, Pat. Good for you. Uh, um, all right. So, um, so let's talk about this uh, book, The Big Nine, right? There's a lot of press now about you know, it's a little controversial and we funny. I just had this thought. This is not in the article, but it's funny that there's a thought. You know, what if one of these big nines, you know, what if, what if a foreign country, what if a Chinese con con company, um, you know, were to buy uh, Zillow? You know, yeah. I mean, that uh, it could very well happen and things could happen a lot faster um, that way too because they wouldn't have a lot of the restraints and controls that you know amazon seems to have from from like they did in trying to move to new york or whatever no one would be giving well, shit no, because I, I they, think, I they think were it, chinese it, it's like mark zuckelberg gets called before congress about every three months yeah and, right right and privacy well, issues hey you're you're collecting all this data on these people and uh we want to break up your company hell elizabeth warren wants to break them all up um and it is it's, it's saying that all of them should be broken up into multiple pieces. Well, what Elizabeth isn't thinking about is there's basically six companies in, in the United States that control 90% of the data that is gathered off the internet. Um, in the book, The Big Nine, written by Amy Webb, she calls it the G-Mafia. And what? that is- The what mafia? The G-Mafia. She what's, is- What's G? G? G is Google. Okay. M is Microsoft. A is Apple, F is Facebook, I is IBM, and A is Amazon. That's G Mafia. It's kind of a bad term to use because it creates a negative connotation to it, but that's the acronym. And what she is basically saying is these people here in the United States, those six companies, control 90% of the data that is generated off of the internet. They need to come together and create and, and pool that data and make it for the betterment of society, not strictly for the profit motive of each of them. Because if they don't, their counterpart are three companies in China. Those three companies are Alibaba, which is, was created in China to mirror Amazon, Tencent, Ten, and it, it is pronounced and spelled T-E-N-C-E-N-T. -E -E and Tencent is basically uh, Google wrapped around Facebook, wrapped around IBM. And then yeah, the third wrapped one- Wrapped around IBM. Yeah, they started out as a gaming company, right? They started as a-, as a Yeah, but they, now- And they've just blown up based on all, you know, on that. Yeah, well, they, they have converted the Chinese from games to- a cashless society that if, if they want rice and beans, they go down and show their, uh, there was a story that. So that got, they created like a Libra or some shit? Like, I mean, is there like a. No, they don't have a cryptocurrency. They don't have currency. Well, how do you. There was an uh, article just recently that two guys came out of the country and went into Beijing and went into a store to rob it. And, and the store owner says, we don't have any money. Uh, we do everything over telephones. And the guys went away with, with nothing because there's no cash in the cash register. So, so yeah, so I, I'm going to talk about this. So, Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. That's a title of a comment that I got on my certified listing agent course from Rebus University. It's from Bill Reig. This is what Bill says. Bill says, looking to take your listing presentation to the next level? I've closed 100 appointments since I took Pat's certified listing agent course. Five appointments, 
five new clients, 60 days, boom, do the math. It's worth every single dollar. Thanks, Bill. But listen, guys, I am offering this to you if you haven't already taken it because so many brokers and teams make their agents take it before they do a single listing appointment. But if you haven't taken it, you can go to rebusuniversity.com and get it now. Now, here's the thing. For 30 days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you that course. I'm going to give you the buyer agent course, which teaches you how to close every single series buyer that calls on the phone or emails. The certified team agent course is taught by Jeff Cohn, one of America's top agents on how to build a team from zero to hero to hundreds and hundreds of units every year step by step it's like a 12-hour course plus seven other courses yes you heard that right all for a measly 127 bucks a month if you were to go to rebus university and buy these courses individually it costs you over ten thousand dollars but today if you go to the future of real estate training.com that's future of real estate training.com you'll learn what bill reek did which is how to close a hundred percent of the listing points you go on quite impressive and you'll learn all the other incredible details provided in the 11 five-star courses that are offered yeah it's like all you can eat bizarre you go in now and you pay 127 bucks a month if you can eat all 11 courses in one month that's all you pay is a buck 97 this is a bargain guys get it now future of real estate training.com Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyde. Been the Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe, and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you. So it's it's just kind of like um it's just kind of like a Venmo, right? You're just you're just like an Apple Pay or whatever. Apple Pay and Google Wallet, which have Google not Wallet. taken have not taken off in the United States. But they should. And now yeah, let and me tell you will. that and they will. It's only I agree with that 100%. I hate cash. Yeah. It's like and my my kids don't use cash. They think cash is funny. Um you know, you know, this is interesting. I, you know, another article I read uh, where the city of Philadelphia, and you'll like this, the city. So what was happening was the same thing that was that was in China, and the the I don't know if the merchants were were Chinese or not. They may have been. I don't know. Um, but um, the, the, all the there was a bunch of merchants in downtown Philadelphia selling pretzels and hot dogs and stuff, and um, they stopped taking cash, right, because they were getting robbed. You know, okay. and stuck up and uh so they were like no cash you got to use venmo you got to use apple wallet whatever you know there's a million ways to give me cash nowadays especially if i'm if i'm a one-man business just right. venmo it to me right um so uh or swipe you know give me your credit card and we'll swipe it on my wallet right. with, with my stripe or whatever um my square so uh, the city of Philadelphia decided to come back with a, with a new law that says you have to take cash because huh. you're discriminating, discriminating against people who don't have credit cards and can't afford a phone with a Venmo app. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
So the answer to that question is give everybody a smartphone. <laughs> Which they did for a while. Because yeah. I know I had a brother that got one, right? He was homeless, truth be told, yeah. and he got and he got a uh, what they called them Obama phones, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was That's right. Uh, I 10, 12 that. years ago, but yeah, he got a he got one for free from the system. So I've got two of them sitting in a drawer. Because, <laughs> because yeah, you know, I, I replaced those them. Are, those were bad. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not have somebody who pools them, makes clears all my data off of them, and hands them out to the homeless? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We solved that problem. So, yeah. so, so the, the, the question then becomes, and again, I want to encourage your listeners, read, read and figure out what's going on. Find the book. It's called The Big Nine. It's written by, by Amy Webb. It, it's, a, it's a pretty heavy read because it tells you what artificial intelligence all is. And then it goes into three scenarios, good, bad, and ugly, as to what will happen in the future if we don't start pooling our data, if we start, don't start. Yeah, so what's the consensus? Yeah. And let's bring this back to real estate and real estate sales. I mean, what will happen, right? Cause it's obviously, I mean, this is a fast moving train and there's nine companies, like you said, going for the same. Um, They're competing know, for the same data. Potentially competing for the, for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. And let's say out of the nine, let's say three of them, have in the back of their mind, we need to tap in to this $74 billion that was paid out in real estate commissions in 2018. Like, to, like what do you, what do you think is going to happen? I've already stated it. Amazon's going to buy Zillow. Yeah. What about, what about if Tencent bought Zillow? Yeah, well, I don't think, uh, I, I, God, I hope our government wouldn't allow that to happen, but Certainly, uh, yeah. The the the, the uh, at one point the Japanese were coming in, and I think they owned uh, some baseball stadiums. And uh, yeah, that could happen too. But that would be disastrous because truly, it's just like if you watched uh, the news uh, this morning, they found some uh, undercover Japanese uh, tour guide from South California was dealing with undercover agents buying secrets um for for uh, of the united states government so they have spies in our country it, it's kind of interesting pat yeah, we used, have that's of course they do Everybody we we, we, we used to fear russia spies we everywhere too we don't yeah we used to fear russia we don't fear russia anymore uh they meddled in, in our last election i think the the next election going to be china meddling in it um and, and I don't quite honestly understand why China wants our problems or we want their problems. I don't see why we don't all, all of us join in this together to make a better world, except then I- Do you I, really I, think these not, there's, there's just no way, dude. There's, do you really think these are going to come together and say, hey, let's share our data? I mean, that would be- Or let's share our technology. Uh, I don't know if that's realistic. I, you but know, I, it probably capitalism. isn't because- mm -hmm. Because the other thing, and you and I were talking about this, where this is going to go and where it's going to benefit real estate agents is not artificial intelligence, uh, 3D printing and robotics will make low waged third world country labor in a, a, a non issue. Because if I can produce um, my, my shirts, my t-shirts, my shoes, everything with robots, I don't need to do it in China. And I don't want it at that point take on the cost of shipping it across the ocean and transporting it into the United States. Now with robotics and uh, 3D printing, I can produce it to Paducah, Kentucky and put a lot of people to work and put real estate, make dead real estate very valuable, which then makes a commercial uh, real estate agent, very valuable. It also employs people in that community. That makes a real estate agent have more people uh, that they have to find homes for. Now, you, the, the robot doesn't need a home, but the person who repairs that robot does. So now the next issue is who's going to educate these people to uh, take the jobs of the future? We got a bright future in front of us. We really do. 
We just need to be, as real estate agents, need to be knowledgeable of it and be ahead of it. We need to start connecting the dots and figuring out where we fit into the new equation. And, and just to sit back and say, I, I saw a video the other day where one of the renowned or high, highly watched YouTube real estate coaches was asked the question, where, uh, how is the iBuyer and Zillow going to affect my future? And he said, that's ridiculous. They have <laughs> no effect on your future. This is, the eye buying has been going and flipping has gone, been going on for ages. This business is a eye to eye relationship business. Well, damn it, so was the brokerage business. So was buying shoes. I used to go into a department store and a little guy used to put the shoes on my feet. He ain't there no more. Damn. So, you, so did a, a banker. But now we have an ATM machine. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Those were all relationship businesses. And, and if you're in the, this business and you, you believe that iBuyers aren't going to affect you and you believe that Zillow isn't going to affect you, you need to crawl out of the hole you've been living in and start reading and start, <laughs> and start listening. No, 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 no. You know, in a lot of towns, it's, it's certainly more prevalent. You know, um, like I, you know, some agents in Phoenix, Arizona, they get crushed by oh iBuyers a lot. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, you know, th these guys suck. They, you know, they, you know, it's a, it's something that didn't exist before that exists now that's affecting them not getting listings that they felt were rightfully theirs, right? Um, yeah, Phoenix is a test tube is the test tube for tomorrow's real estate market. Yeah. And I think the pro this coach probably had a point in that, you know, now more than ever, you need to be in a relationship because if, if you're not, it's easy for them to be like, eh, dude, I just put it up on Redfin. Sorry. Right. Uh, dude, I just, I just, I just, I just did a knock. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Don't worry about it. But if you're like, if you're deep in the relationship, which was probably his or her point, um, and, and you're like helping them out and stopping by their house and in a serious relationship where there's some guilt there and reciprocity needed by them and be like, ah, I can't do that to carry, you know, he's been such a good That's guy. Bullshit. I'm going to let him do it. <laughs> no, of course they're going to, we've done it in every other part of our life. Uh, that is what Amazon is built on. I did a video just recently Amazon will act, offer you a 60 day guarantee on your home. You bought because they will go in and they'll do the inspection up front. They'll know what's happening in that home. Wait a minute, slow this down. Yeah. They're going to, so what do you mean? What? To, to, I mean that you're going to buy a $500,000 home yes. and 60 days later you go to Amazon and say, hey, I want my money back. And they're going to say, why? Well, this and this is wrong. Okay, we'll come out and fix it. No, I want my money back. Okay, here's your money back. Is that crazy? I buy all my shoes from Zappo. And Zappo is owned by Amazon. And if these shoes don't perform the way I want them for a minute, year. Is that true? I don't know if that's true. If what? They're... That Zappo Zappos, is owned by? It's Zappos, yeah. They're, they're owned by the Amazon. They are. And I can, if my, I, I, I wear Air, Air Max. They have an air pocket in the back heel. And if that pocket goes flat within a year, I can send it back to Zappo and they will either refund my money or give me a, a new pair. I bought a $400, $450 printer. I checked the wrong box. It turned out to be a black and white printer. I got it here. I put it up. And that's when I discovered it was a black and white printer. I stuffed the thing back into the box, which I couldn't get it to fit. I taped it up. I sent it back to Amazon. And they said, do you want your money back or do you want a color printer? I said, I want a color printer. They sent it back to me. They sent a, me a, a new, new one. printer. A, a new, new one. Yeah, yeah, a new one. Yeah, you yeah. buy anything. And I swear to God, this will happen. You buy a house through Amazon, you don't like it, they'll give you your money back. Now, think about that, Pat. How many people are actually going to move out of the house? That's some crazy stuff. But, you know, if you think about it, too, you know, like um, my trainer just bought a, a, a car from Carvana and uh, 
it's the same thing. They dropped it off at his house with this, you know, big truck. He, he went online, looked at it, you know, worked out the price or whatever. Same thing with this ask bid again, right? You know, the, and, and, and got the price, computerized price. I don't think a human being was there, you know, and then all of a sudden a truck showed up, dropped out of his house. I think he has two weeks or maybe a month or something. He has a certain amount of time that he can drive this minivan around with his three kids in it. Mm -hmm. um, three little kids under like six. Um, and if he doesn't like it or his wife doesn't like it or the kids don't like it, he just emails Carvana and they come out and they pick it up. No That's going to happen in the real estate market. It, and, and why can it happen? How can it financially How happen? can that happen? Because it seems because like too Amazon big a deal. Because Amazon doesn't give a damn about the commission. That's not why they're in the business. That's not why they're in real estate. They want the house to be a smart house so they can gather the data. They've already proven through the gathering. See, in order for that to happen, though, they, there has to be this level of confidence where they're like, oh, we're not sweating it. We're going to sell it again. And, and that only happens in a good market. What they don't understand, I think, my opinion, right? Because I've seen ups and downs. I know you have too. I mean, there's times when houses sit in, in, in rural areas now, it's this, it, this is happening. Um, you know, it, it takes two years to sell a house. I've had houses that have been, I've been like the sixth agent on, right? That have been for sale forever. And, and for them to finally get a house sold, Yahoo, house is sold, and then have to give it back 60 days later. It just goes against all, you know, uh, that you all thought that process you'd have in a really bad market in a in a seller's market or a buyer's market you're happy when the house sells and relieved because it might not you might not be able to sell it again but or i guess you, what you're saying is they're not worried about it they're not do you think they, they're going to resell my shoes again no my shoes showed up in 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 uh yeah, but you're talking a difference of a half a million dollars versus it's, 75 bucks it it's just a matter of of numbers it, it, and, and first of all, then you, you've got to ask yourself, how many people are actually going to take up? They now have to incur the cost of going and finding another house and, and, and moving. They got to pay for the moving. They got, it isn't going to happen that often. I guess they figure that they're no worse than they were 60 days prior, right? Maybe a cleaning fee, maybe a fix up right. fee, which they'll, the lawyers will come up with stuff to make sure that you, they're covered there. But um, I guess they figured, well, we really didn't gain anything by having Carrie buy that house because we're, we're still at zero where we were 60 right. days ago. We're not in a negative at this point. So, and, it, and again, it's a write-off. It, it, they will eventually sell it, even if they have to sell it at a loss and still turn it into a, to, into a uh, smart home. It, and let me give you some other statistics on that. You already drive a smart car. There are 130 sensors in your car, and that's going into the cloud, and somebody is, is monitoring it. Zilla, or Amazon, collects 33% of the data in all the cars in the United States. They project by 2030, that will be a 450 to $750 billion business. Now, do you know what Zilla, uh, Amazon's current uh, financial or, or cash flow is, it's 533. So if the, your car data will take them from 533 data to an additional 450 to $750 billion worth of business, it will dwarf their existing business. This, is, this was in the Wall Street Journal. This is why they're gathering the data on your car. Now, if they've got 140 sensors in your car, they'll have 1,000 sensors in your home. Mm. How much is that business worth? So they don't care, Pat, if they have to take your home back. It's a very small cost of doing business. The other thing they're going to offer you is when you buy the house, if you want, they will sell you an insurance policy to guarantee you the price you can get your house for your house five, 10, 20 years ago in the future. Now, how can they do that? Because through data and predictive and analytics, they can predict what the value of your house is. Just like 
you've got a life insurance policy on you and they know you're going to die. But if you spread the cost off over enough people, your premiums offset your cost of, of uh, payout. So now I'm Amazon. I offer a 60 day guarantee and I offer a, a future sale price. And now a broker is significant because he does things that Keller Williams, Brookshire Hathaway, all these others don't do. Now, when I move to Birmingham, Alabama, there's one thing that's important to me, and that is the broker I deal with. That is not important to me today. It is not important. It is a relationship business. And where do I get my relationship? I go to a website and I pull up in a driveway and I meet somebody that I have no relationship with. They, their name was given to me and I, I accept them. I see this over and over again. So now I say, I want that Amazon broker who is going to give me a 60 day guarantee and sell me a policy that the house will sell for a certain price at some day. Put me in a computer system of bid ask where I don't have to do shit. And, and I don't have, yeah. And and then there's no commission. Uh, You know, you know, I mean, essentially what you're saying, and I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I think the consensus is, and I'll, I'll end this episode with this is, you know, real estate brokerages, uh, could uh, potentially be doomed. Not potentially. It's it's kind of like Toys R Us. It's Whoa. kind of like Sears and Roebuck. Damn. They're, They're gone. They're gone. You know, real estate brokerages. And, 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 Not even real estate brokerages as you know it. Real estate brokerages, period. Are doomed. Damn. And well, guys, you heard it here. Let me leave it with this. <laughs> Amazon will buy Zillow. There you go. And if it does, look out. <laughs> Gary, man, this has been fun, man. This has been intense and, and uh, it flowed really well. So I really appreciate you uh, coming on today. Uh, I hope you join me for the next episode of State of the Market. And I wish you the best in Birmingham, Alabama. All of Carrie's information, guys, are in the show notes. Go to the show notes uh, and uh, reach out to Carrie and say thank you and subscribe to his YouTube channel. I want to put a link in there as well. Carrie. Best of U.S. homes at YouTube. Boom. There you go. Thank you, Pat. All right, Carrie. All right, I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks for tuning into the State of the Market podcast with your host, Pat Hyben and Kevin Kaufman. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.